In this video, we're going to be solving another positive pair question of uh, equation of circles. And uh, the reason why I've chosen this question, I have solved a couple of questions before also. Uh, you guys are very welcome to check it out. Uh, the reason why I've particularly chosen this question is because this one, I would say, is slightly more difficult than the rest of the questions that I've solved. And you will particularly struggle with this question if your concepts of coordinate geometry are not up to the mark. Okay, So if, you're, if you think your concepts of coordinate geometry are up to the mark, then this is going to be a breeze for you. Anyway, so let's get started. So here it says a circle with center C has equation x minus 8, the whole thing square plus y minus 4, the whole thing square equals to 100. So that means we're looking at a circle that has center 8 comma 4. Okay, so center C, so coordinates of the center is going to be 8 comma 4. And uh, what we have to do is we have to show that the point T minus 6 comma 6 is outside the circle. Okay, so if I look at the equation of this circle, so we know what the center is and we know that R square is basically equal to 100, which means that the radius is basically going to be equal to 10 units. Okay, now if there's a point that's on the circumference of the circle, its distance from the center is always going to be equal to the radius, which means it's always going to be equal to 10. If there's a point that is inside the circle, so that means its distance from the center is always going to be equal to less than 10. But if there's a point that's outside the circle, so that means its distance is going to be greater than 10. And that's what we need to show that the point T, which has coordinates minus 6, 6, is basically outside the circle because it has distance which is greater than 10. So let's see if that's the case or not. So let's find out the distance CT for which, so uh, let me just write down the coordinates of T here, minus 6, 6. So we'll do 6 minus 4 the whole thing squared plus minus 6 minus 8 the whole thing squared. So now we're looking at 6 minus 4 is 2 square of which is 4 minus 6 minus 8 is 14 square of which is 196. So 196 plus 4 is equals to square root of 200 and we know that square root of 200 is definitely greater than 10 which means therefore T is outside the circle. Okay, so that was part A. Let's move to the next part, which is part B, which says two tangents from T to the circle are drawn. Show that the angle between one of the tangents and CT is exactly 45 degrees. Okay, so how exactly are we going to show that? It's all, remember, it's always a good idea to make a rough sketch so that you know exactly what you're dealing with. And that's exactly what I'm about to do. So the center of this circle was or is 8 comma 4. So remember, this is just a sketch, okay? So we're not going to pay too much attention on the aesthetics, okay? So we're just going to... The whole idea is so it's easy for us to kind of understand what we're dealing with, okay? So this is where the center of the circle is. T is a point which has coordinates minus 6, 6. So minus 6, 6 means it's got to be somewhere over here. This is the point T. So let's just make a circle first and then we'll know exactly what we're dealing with. Oops. So yeah, there you go. So this is the circle that we're dealing with. And... There you go, this should work. Now T is a point from which if I draw a tangent, so it says show that the angle between one of the tangents and CT. So we should mark that this is C and the angle from one of the tangents and CT. So let's try and first understand what that basically means. So this is one tangent, okay? And this is the other tangent. And we have to show that this, the angle between one of the tangents and CT is exactly 45 degrees. So that basically means I need to show that this angle or this angle is equal to 45 degrees. Now, before I can work this out, let's complete the triangle. Let's join the center to the point of tangency, which is this. So if you remember from prior knowledge that radius and tangent, whenever they meet, they make an angle of 90 degrees. Okay, so this is something that you guys should know. If you want to be able to uh, handle the questions like these well, you should know concepts like these. So now we're looking at a circle that has radius 10. So that means this length that I'm now highlighting is going to be 10, right? I've written 10 next to it. And the good thing is we've just worked out what CT is, and that was square root of 200. So since this is a 90 degree triangle, that means I can very conveniently apply sine cos tan and figure out what this angle is going to be. Okay, so I'm just going to call this theta for now. So we have the opposite and we have the hypotenuse. So that means we can very conveniently use sine. So sine theta is equals to 10 upon square root of 200. Now, if I work this out, so theta is going to be equal to, let's divide 10 by square root of 200. 
let's do sine inverse of the answer. So we're looking at 45 degrees. So our answer is 45 degrees. It's, we were supposed to show that it's 45 degrees and we've just done that. Anyway, now here comes part C, which I think is quite difficult. Again, given that if your concepts of coordinate geometry are not up to the mark, then you might struggle with the these parts. Okay, so here's what it says. It says find the equation of the line AB, give me an answer in the form y equals to mx plus c. Now, what exactly are AB? The question is telling us AB are the points where the two tangents touch the circle. So let me just first write that down. In fact, just to make things easy, let me just copy this and paste it over here. There you go. Okay, now, so this point right here, let me use a different color, is point A. Now, as per my drawing, it looks like it is on the x-axis, okay? So don't fall for that. Remember, this is just a sketch, okay? Now, here's the thing. Let's join this. There you go. Okay, now. So since we've just worked out that this angle is 45 degrees, so this angle is 45 degrees, that means this angle will be 45 degrees because the two triangles, these two triangles, uh, BCT and ACT are congruent triangles. So that basically means that this angle right here combined will be 90 degrees. So here's what I'm gonna do. If I remove this line temporarily, and let me just erase everything else so that we know exactly what we're dealing with. So this angle is gonna be 90 degrees, that means and this angle is 90 degrees. We know that from prior knowledge, which basically means, again, it doesn't look like it's 90 degrees, but it's, it is 90 degrees, okay? So that means this is also 90 degrees. So basically what we're dealing with is a rectangle. Now that we know that we're dealing with a rectangle, it, may, it, it can't be a square. It may be a square, but anyway, let's, let's not go there. It's, it's definitely a rectangle, okay? So since this is a rectangle, that basically means that the diagonals of a rectangle one of them happened to be AB, will basically intersect where? Will basically intersect at midpoint, okay? Now let's let's put together everything we have and let's see how we can work out the equation of AB. So if you want the equation of AB, the first thing you'll need is the gradient of AB. So how exactly can I find out the gradient? Let's see. I can't work out the gradient of AB straight away, but what I can do is I can very conveniently work out what the gradient of CT is going to be because I have the coordinates of C and I have the coordinates of D. How will that help? That will help me in such a way that I can take the negative reciprocal of it and that'll give me the gradient of AB. So the coordinates of C, if I remember correctly, were eight comma four or eight comma six. Let me just double check, eight comma four. Okay, so now we have the coordinates of C, the coordinates of T, or minus six comma six, okay? Now let's find out the gradient of CT. So six minus four over minus six minus eight, which means we're looking at two over minus 14, which basically means that we're looking at minus one over seven. Let me double check, six minus four is two, minus six minus eight is minus 14. Yep, so far so good. Now remember, this is what? This is the gradient of CT. So now if I wanna find out the gradient of AB, so that's basically going to be equal to the negative reciprocal of minus 1.7, which basically means it's going to be equal to 7. Okay, now that I have the gradient, we can, you know, conveniently check one box that the gradient is, we have the gradient. Now we need to find the point through which it's passing, which means it has, which is basically going to the midpoint. Why? Again, because this is a rectangle, diagonals of a rectangle intersect at midpoint. So now we're looking for the midpoint of CT, which is going to be the same as the midpoint of AP. So we have the coordinates of C, so eight plus minus six upon two, comma four plus six upon two. Eight plus minus six is two, two upon two is one, four plus six is 10, 10 upon two is five. So now let's put it all together. Y minus five is equals to seven, X minus one. So Y is equals to seven X minus seven plus five. So that means now we're looking at Y is equals to seven X minus two as our final answer. And that's also the correct answer, thankfully. Then it says find the x coordinates of A and B. Now, what exactly are A and B? A and B are the points where the tangent intersects the circle. So whenever you need to find the point of intersection, all you gotta do is just solve them simultaneously. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take this equation, seven x minus two, and plug it in the equation of the circle, which was x minus eight, the whole thing square, plus y minus four, the whole thing square equals 200. Let me just double check or else I'll have to make this video all over again. X minus eight, yep. 
Okay, so in place of y, I'm going to replace 7x minus 2. So now we're looking at x minus 8, the whole thing square, plus 7x minus 2 minus 4, the whole thing square equals 200. So now it's just a matter of expanding, simplifying, solving this quadratic equation and getting our final answer. So this is going to be x square minus 16x plus 64. Please remember to use the identity. This will become 7x minus 6, the whole thing square, which is going to be 49x square minus best that I use a calculator, 7 times 6 times 2, which is 84, minus 84x plus 36 equals to 100. Now let's see if there are values that I can add or subtract. So x square plus 49x square is 50x square minus 84 plus 16. So that's what, 90, 100 minus 100x. 100 64 plus 36 is 100, and you have 100 on the right-hand side also. So plus 100 minus 100 will eventually cancel out. And you're looking at 50x squared minus 100x, which means you can take 50x common. So now you're looking at x minus 2 equals to 0, which means that 50x equals to 0 or x minus 2 equals to 0, which means x equals to 0 or x equals to 2. Now, if I go back to my sketch, whoa, I, I surprisingly got it right. You can see that a is the point where it's, where x is equal. Oh, no, wait, never mind, never mind what I said. Okay, so anyway, this was just a sketch, okay? Uh, I thought that I got the sketch right also, but what's important is the whole idea of making a sketch so that you know exactly the kind of scenario that you're dealing with. Anyway, so that brings me to the end of this video and also to the end of the question. I would suggest that you check out the other questions that I've solved and let me know if there are any specific possible questions that you guys want me to solve. So anyway, see you guys in the next one. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.